Monte Carlo analysis is an interesting new form of engine analysis, which gives you contrasting and new results about a position. Let's go to this very sharp position here and start our analysis engine, which in our case is the remote engine. The remote engine has the advantage that it does not uh, use local CPU resources, so your CPU is free for other tasks, in our case the Monte Carlo match which can take a lot of CPU power if you desire. So the Monte Carlo analysis is started in the engine window by clicking on this little dice symbol. Since it's a statistical analysis, this little dice symbolizes the random uh, aspect of it. Basically, it means an engine match started in the current board position with very, very fast games to, to accumulate a lot of games in a short time. And we can do statistical conclusions from what happens in those games. You can see here at the bottom of our engine window that we already played 260 games in Monte Carlo analysis, actually 300 now, and that we get already some result statistics about the games in this match. And uh, you can see, okay, after nearly 500 games, white has won 27 of them, black uh, has won 21 of them, and uh, they are 50% drawn. And overall, this sums up to a score of around 50% for white, which is really strange, isn't it? I mean, look at the stockfish score for this position. There's a sharp decided line which tells us white is easily winning. Well, not easily. And this is interesting here. The Monte Carlo result reflects that however white may have a winning continuation here, it's absolutely not easy. There are many pitfalls. You can see this if you look at the board that black has clear counter chances. And this is reflected now in the result of Monte Carlo analysis for, for this position. And after around 1,000 games, we still have uh, a, a ne nearly even score, though the position is 1 for white. So this gives us an, an additional interesting insight about the position, that it might be won, but it's difficult to convert this advantage because there are many pitfalls. And since Monte Carlo tries to vary the starting moves of the games in this position, there are also many continuations, of course, which then uh, lose for white. And this is reflected in the result of this analysis. Let's have a closer look at the output at the, at the bottom. We already mentioned the win, draw, loss um, um, display. We see that there is a, an overall score for white nearly equal, that there is an error, an error margin, um, which uh, is, is calculated from the current um, um, fluctuation in the result. And we can see that we allocated 20 CPUs for Monte Carlo, which is a lot. Uh, I did this so that we get quick results, many thousand games quickly, because Monte Carlo runs on parallel processors. And we can see uh, our task manager here. Here it is. And I see that my CPU is nearly loaded with the tasks of running a Monte Carlo match and capturing this video from my screen. And this is possible because my engine, as mentioned, is running remote. Very nice feature of the premium account, having a flat rate remote engine included in it. OK, I could change this number of CPUs by right-clicking in the engine output window, clicking on Monte Carlo parameter. And with this slider, I can control the number of CPUs used. And we recommend to click the check the default, which will automatically allocate your CPU resources and also cater for uh, an engine which might run on your local machine, not on a remote computer. Um, but I leave it at, at this high value because we want to get good statistics quickly. So white score is slightly uh, creeping up here, but still it's well within equality. And uh, Stockfish is also creeping up nearly plus three in this position. But this doesn't irritate our Monte Carlo match to say black has 
It's just chances here. Okay, the second line shows us um, a variation, which is basically the variation calculated from all those games uh, with optimal play, optimal score for both sides. And interestingly enough, the first three moves which are displayed here they are exactly the same uh, as Stockfish's main variation, though those engines have nothing to do with each other. One is running on a remote server, one is uh, one variation is calculated from uh, 4,000 games in an engine match here. Um, this variation scores a bit better than the overall score, 56, but still not completely easily won for, for white. Uh, and then we have some numbers here. These num the numbers mean games. 1980 games have played have been played with bishop b3. 1990 with from those with queen f2. And finally, the last number tells us that um, we have around 2,000 games now where bishop g3 uh, as third move in this variation has been played. So half of those games have actually been played with the main variation and other games with other continuations just to get, get a statistical overview and here finally we can see the current starting variation being played out in this match which is also um, exactly this line and the reason for this is quite possibly that those are sharp forced moves uh, the, um, there are no stupid moves in a Monte Carlo match, moves which drop material immediately. This would just be noise and waste time. Um, in the selection of candidates for the moves to be played out in the match, of course, those moves have to be tactically correct, although within a very short engine search of maybe 50 or 100 milliseconds, which is a lot for, for a powerful modern engine. But still, this is no, um, no um, coincidence that that uh, uh, bishop b3, which might be is a forced move here, is also the best move here in this engine match. How do I know that bishop b3 is forced? Well, I can see this little body square here. Body is running. Uh, I forgot to switch it off, but it's fine. It's just enough the CPU power for body. Body is not on the remote uh, machine. Body is running on my local machine. And Buddy gives me this interesting information here, which I already basically mentioned that this is a pretty forced variation because you see every move in the engine variation has this little colored square behind it. And this means it's a forced move. And uh, you know that uh, if it's a green square, you can see that this move is uh, actually, uh, yeah, the winning score for white if you play this and the second best is, is, is worse. The, uh, second best move. Okay, so that's the statistics about the match. One final cool feature uh, about the hmm, uh, Monte Carlo analysis is that you can now hover on pieces on the board and uh, you can see um, the maneuvers or paths those pieces take uh, in those games which we have been played. It's uh, 6,000 games we now here, have here. And uh, there is a color of those arrows. And the greener the color, the more successful the move in those games. And the more red the, uh, the color, the less successful is the move. For example, white, of course, is, is, uh, is objectively won here and should somehow, it should be reflect that my... Um, that the move, the, the pieces of white have more green arrows than the pieces of black, because black obviously loses more of the games. So, and I can see that uh, sometimes my rook here, my black rook, somehow in some of the games ends up on h2, and this is a green arrow, then probably in those games uh, black is really fine. Okay. So much about the Monte Carlo analysis, and actually, uh, when we look at this game, there were a couple of more moves. So White has a clear win. Stockfish is now up to plus three, but Black blunder, White blundered here and overlooked this mate after Queen F two, 
and I st stop my stock for my Monte Carlo analysis here because it's a clear mate and I can see that even the result of the game between those two humans here reflects uh, what we have seen uh, to be valid about this position that this is very sharp, very dangerous and uh, Stockfish, even though it's a fantastic engine didn't deliver this information, Monte Carlo analysis did. Final remark, if you are irritated about those arrows on the board, if you don't like that, uh, I stopped Monte Carlo here, let's start it at, at an arbitrary early position again, and uh, if you're irritated about this because you would like to enter moves on the board, then you can right click Monte Carlo parameter, and then you can switch off peace path on hover so that you don't get those arrows here. In this new position the arrows are lighter because we don't have so many games yet.